your grief changes the older you get mm -hmm. and the phases of life that you go through. So my grief now is so different than my grief then. Because I, again, I don't no, remember so much. you just cried. I just cried? You just cried. The and it was in year. the spotlight. Yeah. Which you find comfort in because it's like a whole world on like grieving with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you find anger in it because you're like, well, it doesn't change anything. He's still not coming home. Not knowing, and I've done the same thing. I'm wondering, what that what, did he suffer? Did he was did, was it quick? It's so interesting to have a, a death like September 11th or something where you don't get answers. <laughs> Sisters, <laughs> I'm gonna start off with that because I. I mean, for anyone watching on YouTube, I'm in the same exact shirt I was because I just recorded an episode with my mother. And now the other the other two most important women in my life are my sisters, Gina and Jacqueline. And Jacqueline's nodding her head if the camera's not on her. Um, I want to thank you both for being here. Um, I know it takes a lot just to do this. I know neither of you have ever really spoke publicly about any of this. And I think it's a really special time to have a sibling dynamic about sharing this conversation because there's so many other people that Obviously, I've lost someone. I think the dynamic in a family is so important because everyone handles it so differently. There's three of us, different ages, and you have the sister thing, um, the boy, the baby boy, just the boy. There's just so many differences in the way that individuals handle losing someone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all lost our father, and obviously mommy lost her husband. So I definitely want to tap into, you know, obviously what you guys felt, what you experienced, the dynamic between us as siblings, um, how you two communicated and how you both grieve so differently from what I understand. But uh, again, thank you, Gina and Jacqueline, for both being here. I got Gina on the right, Jacqueline on the left. And uh, to start off, whoever wants to take the ropes, what do you remember from the first either day or that week from September 11th? Is there any memories that stand out the most? Um, I feel like 9-11 uh, in general, the day is what comes to my mind first, is like everything that unfolded that day. But now, 21 years later, sitting here, I feel like when I knew he was gone, my main thing was, holy shit, I want people to know who he was. So mm. it feels funny to sit here on a microphone <laughs> <laughs> talking about it because that was like my anxiety. The anxiety was- After losing him and knowing he was gone, I was like, no one's going to know him. Like, how, no, he's, he's, is he going to be erased? Like, right. I, I, I panicked about that. Was that? And what, I felt like I had to tell people like who he was and what I didn't want people to forget him. What about September 11th as a whole? Did that the fact that it was public is kind of ironic having that thought. And when we, we all lost our dad on a public light, so in some ways he's not, but then he's, for lack of better words, is jumbled in with three thousand other people. So it's mm -hmm. public, but also it's community. It's a community of everyone. So yeah, does that make I, sense. I took comfort in that it. It's not. I don't think it's forgotten. I don't. I hopefully it, it never is forgotten because it's so public mm -hmm. that when the anniversary happens, it's. I feel like oh, it's it's a way for everyone to remember, you know, him, not just him, but all the lives that were lost that day. You feel a sense of comfort in knowing that there's thousands of people that are feeling the same grief as you. Well, then, what was going through both of your heads? I mean, Gina or Jacqueline? Oh, you know, Gina, you can go first in regards to. Because you were, you just started college. I was seventeen, and you were you were literally at college. I was literally at college, yeah. And my roommate woke me up, so it was strange. It's weird looking back. A lot of I don't remember a lot to be honest. I think as a teenager, I was still in that age bracket where you think your parents are invincible and nothing's mm -hmm. going to happen to them, and then we never experienced a trauma like that, you know, ever. So going through it was almost weird. Just, I don't remember feeling like it was real. It took a long time for me to accept that it happened and he was gone and he wasn't coming home just because it was so right. Like it you, was weren't so, at, you weren't, I home. wasn't home. And when, by the time I got home, everything had happened. Mm -hmm. Like the towers were already down and I feel like I was catching up to you're kind of getting up to speed because we didn't have cell phones the way we did today. So like nobody knew what was happening. Nobody knew what was going on. And you couldn't so get in touch with anyone. You couldn't get in touch with anyone. Yeah. So by the time you got home and and you had the TV, the TV was what kind of showed us everything and, and what was happening. So it didn't really sink in mm -hmm. until a long time, at least for me. It took me a long time to kind of accept everything that happened. 
And again, like there's so much I don't remember. It's, funny. it's interesting that you say that because I, I always chalked it up to like, okay, was I just because I was 12? Was it a blend of being 12 or just my the traumatic experience? But there's so much I don't remember. And it's, I was telling mom on the last time when we just recorded our episode that it was kind of like, it's just frustrating. And it kind of frustrates me to not, almost not remember what you two were going through. Like, it, it, you know, you obviously know how much I, how close we are, how much I care about everyone. But like to not remember those things. Well, you couldn't. You were too small. Your brain literally wasn't mature enough to grasp the severity of what happened. Yeah. And even just grief, like you don't know how to grieve as an 11 year old boy. I mean, like little how, seven, I mean, do you know how to grieve? Yeah, you don't. You don't. Even, yeah. even now looking back and it's still, your grief changes the older you get mm -hmm. and the phases of life that you go through. So my grief now is so different than my grief then. Well, that's yeah. what I'm curious about because Jacqueline, ja you, ja Jacqueline wears her heart on her sleeve. I think everyone knows that, that you might, might not know that. And me and Gina, I feel like are, I would say more similar and like being a little more inward perhaps. Yeah. So Jack, were you, do you remember being, were you more visceral? Like were you like, like immediate tear, were you tear? Like, obviously everyone cried, but did you break down and like compared to, what was the difference in the dynamic of how you both handled it? I, I was home waiting for everyone to come home. So I remember in a, being in a panic, not, also not knowing where daddy was, but also being like, Gina's not home, David in school, mommy started a new job. I couldn't get in touch with her. I, I didn't even know the number. <laughs> and the, just waiting, like even to get in touch with Jeffrey, I was like, where, where, where is this real? Like, is this really happening? And mm -hmm. then once everybody came home, I felt like I was like in, in a mode where I was like, he's not dead. Mm. I was like, because I had friends calling me, Kathleen calling me, friends calling me, being like, my dad's home, he's home, he made it, he made it home. Like, yeah, you were hearing stories of people who got out. Right, oh, you had like yeah. a false hope of saying, okay, well, we're going to find him. Like, we yeah. went on a news channel and, and showed pictures and said his name, went to we search hospitals. We went to the city, like, I think, I don't remember how you many. You both did? Yeah, yeah we Where went was to I? the city. Home? With you a, were home? With uh, Uncle Tommy, Uncle Carlo, and uh, the family. And we went to the city, we went to the to Red Cross to just see if his name was on any list. So that that's the crazy part about specifically having that experience with September 11th. There's, there's obviously su there's sudden deaths. There's other experiences that weren't 9/11 with a similar, I guess I know I guess natural disasters or whatever. But that idea that there's hope blended with, like, you know, you just don't know. Yeah. At what point do you guys, do you guys recall a turning point of being like, okay, he's not coming home? Remember when we the went? Nighttime. Oh well, the night. Yeah, the night. That first night. First night? I, think, I think the the morning, mm -hmm. the next morning, we all went to bed and we, we had a hard time going to bed that night. And then I woke up. We slept to, in Gina's room. You probably yeah. don't remember, but me, you, mom, and Gina were in one room. Really? We couldn't close our eyes because we felt scared to close our eyes because we were like, then this day is like over yeah. and he's not home. That was a bad night. Yeah, that was a bad night. And the next day, I remember the next day being really bad too. But again, I don't remember a lot of things either. I remember memories, vivid moments of like going on the ferry and we actually, the family members were allowed to go to the site. I think it was like two weeks after, but that was when the rubble was still there. The smoke was still there, but they were allowing family members to go and look at, look at everything, look at the devastation. I remember that being a traumatic moment. That was very traumatic for me, seeing that the night after. And then for me, the first night that the four of us had dinner mm -hmm. alone, like yeah. family had gone. It was like the house was quiet. It was like a good couple of days, maybe like a week or two after everything happened. And we sat there and we had our first meal without him. I remember that being very strange. Yeah. What was the communication level between, what do you remember from communicating like between you two or with mommy? Like what, like that communicative aspect of starting that process of trying to get through it. Cause you know, mommy took, she took the bull by the horns and really just. Yeah. I, think, I don't think mom really showed her grief for a long time. Cause I think she, just was like, I got to put it together. I have three kids. I'm not going to fall apart. And I think she kind of just like pummeled through it. And I suffered in silence. I was the quiet one, kind of like you. I cried at night. I had insomnia for a long time. You were more verbal about it. Yeah. But also watching you, like you collected newspaper articles. You were like a hoarder in your room. And then when you had to go to college... I remember, and my and mom sent us back to school. Like I went back to school. Like the next week we, we went back to school. And I remember being like, she has to go back to college. We drove you home from college. And that was really hard. Cause I had you and, and mommy at home and then her leaving, it was just like, 
a um an unsettling feeling it was just yeah. like uh, another one another goodbye another it was just like annoying yeah but i also really remember you getting home from school that day yeah and I remember, me, that's what i remember you me and jeffrey mm -hmm. her husband took you in we sat you down in your room and we were on your bed and You were little. You were so little. You were Jake's age. Yeah, 12. Yeah. And I mean, 12 okay. is Jake, <laughs> when you really think about it. What do you remember seeing in me? Because like I said, I, I, I'm I'm not trying to make, it's not make this about me, but I'm curious. Because like, again, I don't no, remember so much. you just cried. I just cried? You just cried. <sighs> Sorry. It's okay. No, 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 no. I'm trying to leave you it off. Cried. Yeah, and again, I don't know. Um, I don't even. I don't. We all did though. Like we was like a site. We just sat there, and we told you we were like you know something happened to Daddy. I don't remember who spoke. I don't, I don't know how if remember if it was you or if it was Jeffrey, but. Well, I remember seeing the. I remember coming home. I remember being with restrained from seeing the TV, but I remember going. I forced myself through the living room. And the Abertelli our cousins were in the living room, and. I forced myself to watch it and I saw everything happen. I saw, it was, I was, like you said, you came home, everything was done. Saying I came home at like three o'clock, everything was done. Mm -hmm. So I watched the replay immediately. I remember that much. And then after that, it's like it all went black. That's why this is a conversation so important to me to understand what you were going through and how you felt, but more importantly, how you got through it. Like, how did you get through it? Maybe it's many things, but how did you proceed from the many years later? It was a lot of chaos if for like, for like a week straight, there was constant people at the house. There was phone calls being made. It was like the beginning, like I said, we were trying to like see if he was alive or find him. Yeah. And then even then, like the whole journey of being involved in this was, okay, three months later, we had a memorial for him. Then six months later, they found his remains. And then it was just, there was so much. It was so heavy. It yeah. was so heavy. The and it was in the spotlight. Yeah. Which you find comfort in because it's like a whole world on like grieving with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you find anger in it because you're like, well, it doesn't change anything. He's still not coming home. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of ups and downs, which is grieving, right? Everybody goes through those ups and downs. It was just um It's just one of those things. Surreal. I think because we were so young, especially you, you don't really get to deal with the after effects until you're older. That's exactly. Was it similar yeah. for you girls? Yeah. Yeah. Like at what point, because the grieving process is interesting. You have the year, the, the the day up to the year. And then again, what you just alluded to, I feel like there's stuff that I had to figure out down the road. It's not, I, I never, I never considered it grieving. I guess it was, but it was just seeing things in a different light because you change as you get older. You know, you're at the same time, you know, you're, you happen when you were 17. Now, 21 years that we're total, I'm a totally different person. Yeah. Let alone from, I feel like I'm a different person from yesterday. Yeah. I'm 34 years old. I, I'm, still, I'm still calling mom, mommy. So I don't know what the hell that means. But that's, that's a whole other thing. Um, but what, because you mentioned anger. Was there any prominent emotions between either of you that you remember, even let alone today? But were there any prominent emotions besides obviously sadness, this and that? Was there regret? Were there any, as you would say, cliche emotions that you felt more prominent than the others? Guilt. Either of you? Or guilt. Guilt? guilt that he like I was living and he wasn't but that I don't know like that was always an, I, an anger a lot mm -hmm. of anger and I didn't, nothing's right or it's like what you feel is what you feel that's the thing so I'm, I felt worried about uh, just about everything I was worried about um the first things that we weren't going to do with him I was worried about Gina going back to school what was mom like what mommy I was always worried like not to leave mommy home or like you know you going to your games and like yeah. worried, just worried. How do you work through those feelings? Uh, luckily, like I was able to, and maybe like that kind of helped me. I, I was in a position where, where I was 19, I was going to school, but I was like close to home. I had Jeffrey. We had distractions. We, we had distractions. We were still kids, mm -hmm. like school and friends and trips and just being a typical teenager. And then because we were kind of at, but we're also you needed getting me. our license, turning 21. So like we were busy. There were big moments in our lives that were happening that was sad because he wasn't there, but also like yeah. you, you getting married and but I you felt graduating like I, 
you know, you graduating and all that stuff. But I felt like I was needed. So like, it was like, I'm helping mommy take care, like get David where he's got to go or go at his games. Gina would call us like every weekend to go pick her up at college. Cause she, you know, it was really hard. Yeah. Like I felt like I was like, okay, I'm doing something. I felt like I had to do something. Mm. Like so forcefully like, distract yourself. Yeah. So we I had felt each good other. Like we had each other through it all, I think. So yeah, we clung to that. That's the crazy part. That's one thing because I've heard different stories about the, again, the family dynamic, which is why I like these conversations to see the diversity in it. But we ha were blessed to have had that coming together, which I, that's what I think is, could happen with anyone's situation is the coming together, but sometimes it drives each other away. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I'm so interested in like the fact that we handled it so differently. It didn't drive us away. Yeah. I think it brought us closer, if anything. Yeah. That definitely brought us closer. But yeah. as far as like the grieving process, I feel like you just, you're still grieving because. Yeah, it doesn't you, go away. Yeah, it doesn't go away. Like things that happen and you're like, oh, I wonder if he was here, what would happen? Or, you know, you miss him. Yeah. yeah. And I then, felt closer to him. Like I understood him more as the older I got. Yeah. Because I, I started working and having kids and I'm like, oh, I get it now. I'm like, that's why, you know, he was exhausted. Like I was bust his chops all the time because he would be sleeping on the couch all the time. I'm like, dad, why are you like, why are you so tired? <laughs> like, well, uh, now I know why he worked so like, you know, over 40 hours a week commuting every day. And so it was just things like that, little things that I get now as an adult. But I think that's with anything you get your parents more, the older you get. Well, back to that delayed gr grief and handling things down the road. I imagine you, know, you both have kids and a family that it goes back to kind of what Jacqueline was saying with the first, I literally was talking to someone I'm that told me they lost someone and I was mentioning how it was like, I think she, the anniversary is Father's Day, obviously tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, the firsts are definitely something that it was weird because for me, the first were more noticeable when it was like the seventh, eighth, ninth time because I was getting older and really thinking about it. Right. But I could imagine with being at your age, maybe the first were different or mommy or for mom for that ex extent. But that delayed grief, what was the involvement with that? Like, can you think of any changes as the years gone on about your perspectives or emotions? Is did that change or a technical thing? That move, move your mic a little lower, Jack, so they don't hide your pretty face. Like, not like the whole thing. Like, move it down. Does that move? And eh, whatever, just screw it. It's all good. I'm ready to break it. It's okay. I just want to hide your face on camera. Go on. <laughs> um, the firsts. I feel like. I I feel like the firsts were hard. Like first first birthdays you know, things like that. But those don't stand out to me as much as just like day to day. You know, like I don't, yes, graduation or, you know, graduating college. I remember those getting married, obviously those big ones, but like firsts, first dinner you didn't have with them. Those things, I think it was just every day was hard. Mm. Now it's hard because there's so much has gone on. And even like now in a day of age where like you post pictures, like it's no big deal. To, to post a picture even about dad, it's, you have to like search, <laughs> like it yeah. just stopped, his life just stopped, you know? And then, you know, you're reminded through politics, through TV, through people's conversations, everybody talks about it. Where, where were you that day? Or like you randomly talk to someone and then they're like, oh, I lost my dad that day. And it's like, it's just, to me, it's just every day. Mm. Time, I guess, makes it easier to manage but you're always reminded. Mm -hmm. I think it's always something that's in the back of your mind. And yeah. yeah, I'm at the point now where I try to keep the memories I have, try to keep them vivid still with his laugh. Yeah. Just I'm like forgetting. Yeah. Like I, I, I still have vivid memories of that, which is I'm, I'm trying to hold on to those that, you know, things that make me laugh or something funny or like videos, if we look at family videos, we still have those. Or smells. Yeah, or smells. Smells. Yeah. Like if you have a first sip of beer uh, and you're uh, like, ah. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. So I thought you were yeah. going like the fart rain. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> like, that's the like, smell. Like, yeah. I, this like fucked up thing is like, I'm happy to smell his farts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like at this point, it's like, I would take anything to smell. Yeah. But that's another well, way. or like if, if the kids do something that you're like, <laughs> laugh about that you're like, oh, he would have totally loved that. Yeah. Or that's, that's so daddy. And that's the thing as a grown man growing up, it's like it's the new memories that will never exist. It, yes. The new memories is yes. hard, especially as a grown man and a grown woman and, you know, not being there for walking down the aisles and shit like that. It's like, that's what sucks. Yeah. That's what sucks. And Having the kids, made, the grandkids make it, you, you get sadder with that. I mean, like it's, it's, yeah. There's, what, there's a level of sadness that always comes with it, with the good stuff. 
-hmm. There's always that level of just sadness because you wish I, I, you, it's, they're never going to know him, who he was. And, and I try as much as I try to explain it to the kids, you know, it's still hard. That's a hard thing. I think for me, is there anything that you two feel like you're still working out to date that came from that? Whether you know for sure that it came from loss or is there anything oh, yeah. you're, you're massaging out today? All the time. What is that? <laughs> just anxiety. That's that Always thinking. Yeah. I think always thinking something bad's going to happen. Bad's gonna you know what you said like the, the other day when, we, when I came over and I flew to Jersey and we were sitting down, I was, <clears throat> when we were chatting, I was listening to how you were, you know, you even like said like, I'm not always a pessimist. Like, like I'm. I am. I, I'm, I, I mean, I, yeah, I try not to be, but I am. Right. But I, I was just fondling in my head. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe that was just, that's just how you think in general. But my question to you is, are you saying that came from our experience? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I'm speculative. Yeah. I'm saying, how do you see it? Maybe. But, yeah. Maybe I took it as, I, yeah, I try to prepare myself maybe for, okay, instead of seeing, oh, I see the good things that could happen, I always turn and say, okay, well, I just want to prepare myself for if it isn't good, the bad thing. Because you've seen the bad thing happen. Yeah. Just so I can prepare myself maybe a little bit. Have you ever forced yourself to just look at the good thing, like if I were to ask you whether you thought about this or not, what is the best thing that came from this? Whether it's a lesson or whatnot. And obviously, it's a silly question because, like, you would trade anything to have. I would trade anything to have Daddy back. But yeah. you know, there's always a, a, there's something to learn in all this for either of you. I think just how close we all are. Yeah, that's probably the one good thing. There's no yeah. good thing. You don't that's know like what the, the trajectory of life would have been like if he was around, like how our relationship would have been. We were like forced to kind of like lean on each other and be there. Like my, my anxiety doesn't stem from fear of like something bad happening. It stems from like making sure everybody's okay. Yeah. Like happy. And that sometimes gets exhausting because you're always like worried about someone else, you know? Um, I do. I think the good thing is is the closeness. And I, I also think the good thing is that, like, you try hard really not to sweat the small stuff. Like, somebody, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of are like, all right, whatever. Like, yeah. And the big scheme of things. Right. Daddy always used to say, don't don't worry about, like, I've, if I was sweating over something that was stupid, he would always be like, Gina, it's a blip. You're a blip in this earth. Like, you're a blip in the in the scheme of things. Like, it doesn't matter. He would always say that to us. Yeah. And like or, you try to keep that in the back of your head, just, you know, if you're getting upset about something silly. Yeah. Or even just like things he would tell us about family, like, like cousins, we have so many cousins, right? But he would always make it a point to be like, these people are, these are the people that matter. Like they're always going to be there, you know, like he would tell us things like that. So I think that resonates and like sits heavy. Yeah. And then you want that for your kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like you were you were little and like I remember being like and thank God for like the strong people that are around us too like Uncle Augie like you know, my father in law like there was prominent men that like helped like a lot a lot yeah but also like I I did feel like we were we were okay mm -hmm. it was just such a loss because of like who he was and like the way he lit up a room or like the way you try to like please him or not disappoint him, like that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I grieve now for the relationship that we could, could have had. had. Mm -hmm. I always think about that. I'm like, oh, if he was still alive, like what kind of a relationship would he have? You know, what I call him still every day and, you know, his advice. I think that's what I, I want and I miss the most is just hearing what he thinks about things. How do you feel about bringing that up and having those thoughts of the what ifs and do you find that healing or do you find that, you know, bringing you down in many ways or is it both? Like, is it, do you find it as a therapeutic thing of thinking about that or does it drive you insane? No, no both. A little, a little bit, bit of both. both. But I like, to, I like talking about him. I like, Same. like, that was the thing. Like, I always was, I always wanted to talk about him. I always wanted to find like a way to like bring him into like your day to day. So it's like, he is living with us, even though he's not here, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, mo mo mommy told us that too. Like she never made us not talk about him or, you know, always reminded us that like, he's always there, you know, in our hearts. Like you don't, it's not like, just because like you're moving on in your life doesn't mean that like his spirit has to kind of disappear with it, you know? I mean, not to kind of 
change subjects, but I mean, this whole thing that you're doing, I mean, it's a huge proponent of everything that you've gone through, you know? Like, the, I think this is your way of dealing with your loss. Yeah, 20 years later, 22 years later. Yeah. But it reminds me of what she, she was telling me, Mom, about the talks that we used to have with I, there's a blip in my head sitting at the table. Do you remember that? Like, with a glass of wine or eating food, you used to have talks as a family? Yeah. Do you remember those vividly? Yeah. A lot. Isn't that it's a commitment to have her, you guys put it, actually doing that, sitting down as a family? Like, that's got to be a massive core of maybe, I know we're all inherently close. I just wonder how those little moments add to the pieces of the puzzle of why we were able to stay so tight. Yeah. But do you, was it hard? Because I know you're different than, I mean, we're all different, but there's levels to communication. And I feel like you're way more expressive in many ways. And I feel like you've always been, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. Where was your level of expression then happening so soon? And we sat down as a family. Were you, did you talk? I, apparently, I just cried. Yeah. The wine? Th yeah, the, the wine, wine helped? The wine, the wine helped. I remember a lot of wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, a lot of wine. But I don't remember if it was – yeah, because I, I wasn't 21. So, like, I, it was no. definitely, like, in the in our in our house. <laughs> but, yeah, we talked a lot. And I think mom did that because – she had two introverted children and a extro extroverted child. She helped. Like Jacqueline kind of got it out of us, I think, a lot of times. So I think mom made a point to make sure that we were just always talking because she didn't want us to get too deep down that hole mm. where you can sometimes yeah. go. Well, because I, I don't know. To me, like, we, I would watch you and you would be so, like, sad you know, and David was so little that it was like, he was still going on. Like he had to do things like naturally he's 12. Like yeah. he's going to go outside and pick up a baseball and go play with his friends. Yeah. Um, and I would be like, well, what? like I would want to like, I mean, ask anyone, if something's bothering me, I'll say it like 600 times until like somebody listens <laughs> and it's, I'm done with it. And I, I didn't get that. So that's why I think I took on like the, come on. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Because you were very like, like let's in. talk about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember going in her closet and seeing just boxes of like all the nine eleven articles, like all the ones that were like well, the, I, the I bad just, ones. Yeah, like, I just wanted. I needed a store. I needed something to tell me what happened. Like I, I would, I wanted to know what happened that day. Like where on him. Like I wanted to know where he was. Well, what did he, he went through? Did he try to call? Like we, did, I had, we had no way of knowing about what he went through. And like over the years, we kind of, you can't really piecemeal it together, but you can kind of, like, you know, I, the pe when you hear the stories of the people that fell, like just bodies falling out of the building that day because of the heat and the fire. And like, you wonder, and like there's a, there was a newspaper article of literally the top of the North Tower. And I saw people in it, like in the windows, like not necessarily jumping, but just people trying to get air. It was like a close up. And I remember that was like my only window of, proof of just find trying to figure well, out like what he went through that day and that's just the frustrating part of not i think in general not knowing things but that day of september 11th and any events that are you know catastrophic like that not knowing and i've done the same thing of wondering what that what, did he suffer did he was did, was it quick it's so interesting to have a, a death like september 11th or something where you don't get f answers because there's so many deaths where, okay, someone has cancer, this or that. I'm not comparing the two. I'm not saying anything's worse or better. But in our experience of losing someone that's in front of you, it's like, you know the whole process. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know how they're feeling in some ways because maybe you didn't talk, whatever, but you saw how it happened. This was just, you know he was there. You know that happened. The rest is up to our imagination. And sometimes that's a weird place to go to of just speculating what happened. I can't, even talking, like you talking about it, like I never, try, I tried never to put my brain there. I can't help it. I can't do it. And when I do it, it's like, it's like sickening because it's almost like when people say, you know, if I say my dad passed away on 9-11, well, he was freaking killed. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a murder. Yeah. It was a hor horrific thing those people went through. Whoever, whether it was fast or slow, like if you were there in the building and you had a boot, like it wasn't, it's horrible. Yeah. So I try not to go there because that part, that part is petrifying to me. Like, I can't even think about that because that's the stuff that, like, I that's why I think I put my energy somewhere else. Like, okay. that's you as healing, right? Because she was like, I want to feel that pain. Like, I want to know that pain because if he went through that, I want to know, like, like, that's why on the day or, like, whatever goes on, you 
want to go back to those like moments where you're like, that was fucking horrible. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. But even watching it like on TV, you're like, or I'm a teacher teaching the day to my students. Like, it sounds like it's not, he wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like, I know he died there, but like, it's like, I don't know, like Pearl Harbor to yeah. like people. Yeah. Like, they, you read about it and you're like, holy, that's horrific. Well, that's the, and I'm not saying this in a cynical sense, but that's what we were, I was mentioning earlier. It's like he was, like, the contrast of you thinking that will he be remembered, but also understanding that literally the hashtag is never forget. But at the same time, it's, he's jumbled in with with everyone else. And that's, Good or bad, I'm just saying, like, it kind of does get blurred out. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm similar to you, Gina, like that I didn't collect things, but I, uh, I've i watched the footage over and over and over and over. I forcefully, especially on the anniversaries, not, not still, still to date, but especially throughout the years, I would watch the towers. I would want to see all the angles. I would want to see, I would want to hear the, the, the sounds, the screams, the fire trucks. I don't know what it was, but like I... It's almost as if I wanted to be there. Sometimes, like that's my assumption down the road. I feel like I, I wish I was there. And yeah. obviously, what could I have done? I've said this before, but I like, wanted to experience. I want maybe not the same reason as you did. Is that similar to what you were feeling? Like you yeah. just wanted to hear it. You want I wanted to feel it, and maybe that was my way of getting emotion out. Like because I would cry, and maybe because I wouldn't cry prior or something. Like that would be my way of like I need to get something out of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I wanted to see it, and it relates back to that day one where I forced myself to watch the TV. Do you you find comfort sometimes at the museum, going to the museum? Yeah, you like could it. Walk, you can, I mean, not comfort, I shouldn't say that. Maybe it's a different word, but because I, it's so detailed. Mm -hmm. Like I and was. And like hell on earth in that one Yeah, room. and, and I, but it's funny because I, like there was a lot of stuff that I like had already seen that they put together in that museum. It was like a step by step of like a timeline of everything that happened that day. The nine eleven museum, I think, is actually yeah. well, really well done. It's very yeah. well done. Very yeah. intense. Yeah. But yeah. talking about me being comfortable, maybe this is for everyone listening. Way too much information to share. I feel like it's almost like an ode to dad, for, to dad for anyone that knew him. But I was in New York by myself, and I really had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I literally leveraged my in, saying like, "I'm the son." Right down, they let me skip the line. I yeah. literally just took a poop. <laughs> I went in there, had to use the bathroom. I'm like, Dad, no disrespect to anyone here, but if anyone would understand, you understand why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I've been there a million times, but um, yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. I apologize to <laughs> no, anyone that's listening, but funny. for anyone that knows our family, it's very close to heart. I don't know if it's an yeah. Italian thing or what. Um, a lot of bathroom. Yeah, that, uh, that ex I told you that story. Remember uh, when uh, I was at 9 11 with, with Zayla and we heard her voice? I told you. Oh, you remember yeah, this? yeah. In the what? You, this is a, maybe an interesting transition. Your mom's voice. So when uh, you go to that one section oh, of the museum, oh, yeah. they have the replays of all the anniversaries of people reading the names. Yeah. And me and her, me and Zayla walked. As soon as we walked to that section, I heard her voice. And, oh. I, and I heard and my husband David Ferrugio. As soon as we walked in, I told you that. Oh, that's. I told funny. you this, but that was like, that was. What are the, the chances are, what is it, literally one out of three? I don't even know what the odds are. I don't know how it's on a loop. But regardless, as soon as we walked in, mm -hmm. I heard her voice saying, and my husband, David Ferrugia. I was like, what? Yeah. That was, and the timing of that, where we were contemplating, should we go in? Sure, you just do it. And then we happened to rock in that exact moment, which is what, a six second gap of her saying that? And there's so many. And there's so many. Yeah. So my point of that is, I guess, because you mentioned you had a dream. I don't know if you want to share that, but that energetic spiritual background of, this whole experience, like, is that this experience shifted your mom saying something? What is it? You can say it. All right, do you want to share the dream? Yeah, it wasn't a dream. I you were up. I was up. I was wide awake because I couldn't sleep. I wide had awake. I had really yeah. I was I couldn't sleep for like a good year. I had insomnia because my brain would always go back to the suffering that he went through. Just envisioning it in my head, I couldn't I couldn't shut my brain off with that part because I was always envisioning. I was like I I I I don't know I don't know why I do that, but. That's how I dealt with it. And I was crying like immensely. And then out of nowhere, I just had a strong sensation of, it, it was like an energy. I, I can't explain it. It's, it was like a feeling, but, and people sometimes explain they when they have not, it's not like out of body or anything, but if it's more like it's an energy where you feel it and you're, you're hearing things, but there's no words. Mm. It's weird. But I remember thinking, okay, it was him. Mm -hmm. It was like daddy. It was like a wave of just a, a feeling 
that he was telling me, I'm here, I'm okay. Like, stop doing this to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I got my notebook. I had like a diary and I picked it up. Like as I was going through like the, the message, I guess, whatever I was getting, but, and I was writing it down. I was like, it's like, he's, it's my dad. Like, this is where he is. This is where you go when you die. Like I, I have, I know now, like he's okay. He's at peace. And like, it was, it was a hundred percent. I believe in my bones that it was him sending me a message because I literally would cry myself to sleep every night, begging for a message from him. And I don't know. And I haven't had one since. And I don't know if like, there's a part of my brain that you have to like Turn open off. yourself up to, yeah, to get it. Maybe I was just at such a low point, but it was yeah, before I remember we were going to go see the medium. Maybe. And I you remember. went, ran, I remember because I woke, you woke, I think I woke, you woke mama. mommy up. Yeah, I woke her up after it and happened. You said, it's like, okay, and I wrote I it down. Now. I don't need to go now. I don't need uh, to go yeah, now. That's what yeah. you kept saying. Yeah. Wow, so was that was a transition? Was that a, that's a, yeah. especially it hasn't happened before. So it's not like this yeah. happens all the time. It's a, but a I feel like when thing. people, and you probably have heard stories like that because you've yeah. talked, you've interviewed tons of people. But when people, like either it's a medium or they go on the other side or they're communicating with, over a, a death, you know, mm -hmm. they're communicating either with a loved one or if it's a medium that talks to people on the other side, I feel like that it's the same thing. It's like where it's an energy mm -hmm. and you don't have to speak, but you know what they're saying. Yeah. I've, I mean, I've heard. Yeah. It's, there's so many different. I, I ask those questions of people that are, are have mediums on yeah. regardless of what everyone believes. Um, it's like the way that they communicate. Yeah. I, I think it's usually through, I may butcher this, but it's, a lot of it's just a, literally a knowing. You ever just. It's a knowingness. You ever just walk into a room every day and just feel off, like yeah. something's wrong and something yeah, is wrong? it's a feeling. It, yeah. there is the, intuition's real. Our little radars, our little sensories, sensors around it. It's a real feeling that I think everyone can relate to. Yeah. I think it's that. Yeah. And I've said this a million times again, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. If we are by definition made up of energy, yeah. we cannot be destroyed. Therefore, we continue on in some form. What that is, I don't know. It just yeah. makes sense that you can communicate through energy because if you literally think of a radio wave, a frequency, you turn on to 101.1, you're tuning into a specific frequency that delivers a message. No one really thinks about the idea of a radio. A radio is ridiculous. Like what? Like there's ta yeah, yeah. towers and satellites and yeah. you just connect and listen. Like it's so normalized, but then people won't believe in a near death experience mm -hmm. or something like that. It's not it's completely dismissed it or stories like yours. It's like, how do you, but the radio is normal and we can just connect. What? That doesn't yeah. even make sense to me. Yeah. So if everything's energy, Maybe that's, it was just, you knew it. You've had a feeling, a knowingness. And even Ken, my mom's partner, even had that story about after he lost his son, he felt like at work, a way of a, a f energy go through him. Mm -hmm. He had an instinct of knowingness. Clearly there was no words or messages. He had an instinctive knowingness that, oh my God, my mother just died. And, uh, he, and he looked at his watch yeah. to check the time. He had the like instinct of like, what? I got to know where I'm going to look at the time because I felt like my mom just died and it ended up being his son. So granted, he was wrong about his mom because he just she just saw her last night. Yeah. But it ended up being his son. son yeah. And it was around that same exact, yeah. they didn't clarify the exact time, but it was, so it was around something. that time. Yeah. But it was he had a knowingness, which I think relates to you. Yeah. You're like, this is daddy. And regardless if it's real or not, if I think it is, but it felt real and that's it. Yeah. To yeah. me, that's enough. So did that, like, what did that just, did that start a healing process for you or just? A hundred percent. That was, that was a I turning I feel like point? I started sleeping after that. Yeah. Wow. Better at least. I've never had, like, I've, I've never had anything like that. I've never had anything like that. You might. Mm -mm. I hope, but I, I feel like I asked for it. I, I haven't, um, I haven't gotten that. I've I mean, had dreams, but not like being awake. Yeah. I've like had that. dreams. I've not, had dreams, but not that. Yeah. I know. It's like. When I, when I ask the questions to you two, like, I, I like to just preference. It's hard to generalize because everyone has different experiences, but what have you learned from this that you feel can apply to other people that are lose, like, lose, like have lost? I can't say have an uh, experience like you had, but what do you, what do you do? Like what, and you only, you only, as mom said on our episode, which I don't know which is coming out first, like she can only explain it as to what she did. Like what helped you guys get through this? I know it might be a little redundant to what we just spoke about. Is there anything that stands out? Is it just the support you had? Is it just an experience like that specifically? Because you mentioned you're still kind of feel like you're working through things still, even 21 years later. Is there anything that you do consciously? And, and to you, are you either of you working through? I mean, I think you just naturally have a way of <laughs> that's just like. No, I I think I am. Um, I always want people around me. And I think that's like a thing that I 
is good. I guess you want people around you, but I'm always like, I don't want to be alone mm. ever. Sometimes when you want to like chill out. But I literally, like, I literally I don't called like, you yesterday. I like, like when I'm just people are myself. like, yeah, I like when like people are around. I don't know. Yeah. It's just. It's so funny. We are like the total opposites, <laughs> but that's why I think we get we all get along so well. Same. I'm by myself all the time. Yeah. I'm this. I and I need moments of alone. I like moments of aloneness, but I like yeah. I like being surrounded. So it's yeah. like to me, yeah. it's like want to sleep over, want to lay. I don't know. <laughs> I like that. I, that that gives me comfort. I mean, and that's also could be hard too because that's not realistic either. Like you can't always yeah. have everybody around you all the time. Yeah. Um, but. How do you feel by yourself? That's like a really loaded question. I know. Well, yeah. unload it. <laughs> oh, no. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough time to unload that feel. about how, ourselves. How are we on time over here? Yeah. Yeah. We'll we're, do. All right. Cool. Um, just checking everyone. We're in a studio that I had to rent out. We only have an hour. So maybe we'll do this again. Um, but what, what first comes to mind when I ask you that question? Well, I think, I mean, right. I think... Have you guys talked about this? Because you're both like instinctively looking at each other. No, well, I think, well, now I just, well, not even her, but like I see so much of dad in you, in her, and like sometimes the kids. Like, I don't know. It, I like to, I spent so much time being so sad and, and, and it's still so sad. There's still moments where, you know, the frog comes in your throat and you catch your breath yeah. and you can't breathe. And it's, it's still very, very raw still, still 21 years later. But I'm trying to embrace all the memories and mm -hmm. now that, you know, just trying to find the joy in life because he's not here. So I feel like there's, I find myself wanting to do things because he's not here. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, he didn't, he, he got cheated in life. Like his life got cut short. Like I'm going to be 40. I'm going to be, yeah. Like I'm approaching 40 and soon I'll be 46, his age. And I think about that and I'm like, holy shit, yeah, like how... Numbers he was so young. And so I, f I feel a motivation a little bit to live life for him mm -hmm. in a sense. And like, I'm not living this grand life at all, but th there's little things that I try to try to do yeah. that it's like, you know. Yeah. I feel, um, I'm good at making people feel good and that's what makes me feel good. Yeah. Mm. Cause I like when, if somebody's down or somebody went through it, I don't have the answer for them, but I, I really, I think I'm good at like making somebody feel good. Cause that makes me like, even if it's like, um, a touch, like yeah. daddy was a toucher. Like I was always like that, like, you know, yeah. like a simple gesture, something simple to make yeah. somebody feel like important yeah. or like make them feel like they're the person in the room. Yeah. That makes me feel better. Cause I felt like that's what what he did sometimes. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. That's exactly that's, what he did. That's he, how he he's was. like you, and and to some extent you too. I don't have that, but I I mean I wish I did, but I'm not. I think I, you like, do. You I are, think you're like a scooper. But he had he had a way like, yeah. You could walk into a room. I forget. It's like find people that when you walk into a room, you feel like it's an air conditioned room. Like oh, they're gonna bring like that <laughs> fresher breath air to your life. Mm -hmm. Like that's who he was. I think, and you're yeah. like that in many many ways. Like and. No, yeah, I, so I no, I'm not. But I went no. Anyway, and you are like that you too. Are. Both like of people want to be around you, and people wanted to be around him. And I think that that's I think what what you, you know who you are and who you are as well. I think it's yeah. all we it's who we are in many ways. But you know we all do it differently. But Jack, you're definitely very good at that. Me and Gina, I think, are sometimes a little more standoffish. I'm not saying like I'm the best at it, and you're not. Of course, I'm just saying, no. I know what you're saying. But that's, I don't know, but that's what I'm saying. But that's I'm not I, like I Mother think, Teresa. But, but I think I think you got a lot of that from him too. I think. That, yeah, you know. I, I try to like take things that, like you said, like things that keep his memory alive. That I don't know, just remind people of it. What about that's mom? That's the forgetness. What have you been taking from mom over there through this experience? I mean we wouldn't probably be this if it wasn't for her. So like, I don't think there would have been any of this if it wasn't for her just constantly like shoving us along. Cause it's very easy to turn off. It's very easy to go to the dark side. It's very easy to not want to be together or just be like, ah, I'll do this on my own. Yeah. You know, I wish she shared more. I think I like, I think we knew she hid a lot of stuff just like not hid, but didn't talk. She didn't, I don't think wanted to show her, probably worry because I couldn't imagine having three kids and having to yeah. go about it alone. 
So, and especially having three kids now thinking about what that must have been like. So I get it. I understand. It's the same thing. Just as I understand daddy more in life, I understand her more in life because I'm pretty much exactly like her mm-hmm. <laughs> in many ways. So, um, <laughs> you know, you get your parents more in that sense. But yeah, I think it just, it's so weird. To, still talking That's about it. That's the same worry I've weird. always had with you girls. Not that I've, I've felt, I felt everything but isolated because you guys even coddled me in many ways. You guys yeah. were both of you, mom. You guys took care of me. Still do. Like almost too much sometimes. Like I feel bad. And I hope I wasn't a burden. But I always get worried about, I'm not worried. I worry about you guys. And I, I, tr- I know you'll be fine. We worry about you. I'm sure you do. <laughs> that I know. Believe me, I know. We worry about you a lot. But I always feel like what kind of you're concerned about, I'm concerned about her, my mom maybe not sharing enough. I always had that idea because I assume like, am I, am I being left out of certain information that I feel like I, I want to help and I want to be there for you girls and I, I feel like you girls don't reach out to me for things, which is fine. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I just wonder, I always thought maybe is there a, a conversation, which there has to be because you're sisters, that you have without me, which is natural, mm-hmm. but at the same time, almost the similarities of what she, maybe she doesn't share. What don't I know? You know what I mean? It's like, what don't I know? And you guys have always been there for me. And it goes back to me always feeling like I was the, the man of the house. Yeah, I was only 12. What could I have done? But I always have this feeling like I didn't do enough and am I not doing enough even to date? No, but, there's nothing. And I'm not asking, I know you're going to respond saying, no, I get that. And I appreciate that. But it's just, I'm just saying that's my feeling. And it relates to what you said about wishing mommy shared more, which is different. But then I always felt like, is there like well, another side to my sisters? Yeah. Well, I think when you left for California, to me, it was, um, I was, I wasn't angry, but I was also like, thank God. Because I felt like you needed that because there was like, you were hitting like your adulthood and it was like, I felt like even though it was going to be hard for you to like go cross country, I was like, this is such the trajectory that he needs to go on. But obviously we all talked about how, who's he going to meet? What's he going to do? How is he doing that? You know, like there was a lot. you see the selfish? No. No, I'm saying that was good. It was almost like too, like when when mom started dating, as much as that was like awkward and weird, it was also like, oh, thank God. Yes, 100%. You know, well, like- I didn't think that in the beginning. You didn't think that in the beginning. <laughs> but but it was I do all, now. Yeah. I do now. But I think yeah. if you were home, like mm-hmm. I lived home. So I think it was like, for me, it was like, thank God. It was like when Dave took that that trip, you know, like you lived in the city. Like you had, it was like, to me, I was like, yes. But it felt like a piece of us was missing. Yeah. When you left. Mm-hmm. It yeah. did. It was like a big chunk missing because we had- we still have such a strong dynamic. And even though you're there now, it still feels, it's still like we're tight knit, but you know, but we, I, I, like you said, I, yeah. you had to do that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and but that. that was, I mean, you know, you could talk about that, why you left and just went to know. the West coast. And is there something pulling you there or you just wanted a change? I think it was something, it was like something pulling me there. I still don't have an answer. And people ask me, it was just like a curiosity. And I always think like, would I have come here if, Daddy was still around. Would I just be working in New York? I don't know. It's one of those questions that. But I think you have a piece of that too. I think, and this is weird that I'm bringing this up, but like Bill Clinton, I read like just a couple of the beginning of his biography, and he's and he lost his father really young, and I remember he had like an excerpt in there that always made me cry. But he was like, my father, at like a young age, I lost my father at such a young age that I felt like I had to live this big life for him. Yeah. And I feel like you have a little bit a of little that bit in of that. you, yeah, because you, you know. You, you want and I have that in me too like I wanted I'm always like trying to do too many things and um but I think you want bigger things and better things and I think that's I think a part of what you know yeah but it's so you got from it, it. and I, I hear that I, th- I think yeah. that too but at the same time I always felt guilt because my question was it selfish because and, and I know you guys don't you girls don't feel that way because you've always been supportive but at the same time as someone who's experienced loss at such a young age, mm-hmm. all of us, you'd think someone would know more than anyone to stay closer physically. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's kind of contradictory to leave your family. No, you can't do that. You, you can't know? just stay no, around. No, selfishly, we fine. missed you. Yeah. Right. But, but also, it was a little bit of relief because you were like a all over the place kind of kid. Like right. you were, um, you could be high strong, you could be high energetic, you could be like, no, I want to stay home. You were kind of all over the place. You're still kind of all over the place. Still still over the place. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like you always have to be like on the move, on to the next thing. And I think doing things like this and finding your like passion and your why and all those things are just like a piece of who you are. 
Yeah. You know, and that is comforting. Like when when you when you see as much as you miss people and you always want them close, I think you are very close. Like my kids like know you. Like, you know, like we see each other. It's not like a Uncle Dave in California that we never see, you know? Like it it never felt like that. Yeah. It never ever felt like that. And I would tell you the truth. Yeah, I know. It was worry, but it never felt like that. Yeah. I don't yeah. I never had that feeling. Oh, I saw all this shit's weird. What the, is this? What is this? I th think this is just more therapeutic for us. I know. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know if people so, are going to really get it like, I don't know who's going to get so any of So happy out Father's, Father's Day to ev mm -hmm. everyone that doesn't have a dad and our dad, obviously. But this is going to come out after Father's Day. Um, but before we do bow out of here, maybe we'll do this. I want to do a round table at some point. All of us would be fun. I'm sorry. Thanks for all everyone for being a fly in the room, for listening to our family dynamic. Um, is there, uh, as a mic drop, as, as I would say, is there anything you would – Anything you feel free to say whatever you want, but from anyone that maybe is has lost someone, either his father, or whatever. I don't know. You got anything to say to them? Even though it's vague, not even to them. Just whatever the hell you feel on your chest. <laughs> well, I, don't know. I think we're all gonna get on the other side at some point, and I think we're the ones here. If you've lost someone, we're the ones suffering, not them. Mm. And yeah. you'll get through it. You'll have bad days and good days. But I, I really, truly believe in the end we'll all be together again. We better be. <laughs> we better be, exactly. <laughs> or, or have some kind of faith, whatever it is. Like, yeah. I'm not very religious, but I feel like I have to hold on to something, you know? Mm, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah. That, I, I, think I mean, you doing it. this with uh, you interviewing so many people, you have to believe that yourself, right? Which with, part? Just that there's, that we go somewhere after we die and. I, I just was saying to her, to mom, when we were talking, I was like, I think all the stories I've heard, everything seems to be positive, any connection to that, whether it's, once again, whatever you believe, everything seems fine over there. So I literally said, I was like, we're the ones that are going through the shit. They're yeah. fine. Yeah. They're yeah. fine. I think. And yeah. if there is nothing, then we don't know there's anything. And we're, you're still fine. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know anything. So it's like, we're, this, whatever we're doing right here, we just got to learn. You just gotta learn, live a love, and then you know. Just try to be a better human, and it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Sometimes I want to be an asshole. It'd be awesome just to be an asshole. To be honest, I wish I was a bad person sometimes, but I can't help it. But uh, Gina, Jacqueline, Mom, I, I thank you for doing this. You know what I mean? Yeah, this, this is, is awesome. I, I think you talking is great for us, but I just this is for people that are listening, of course. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you had the balls, not literally, uh, to do this, it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I tend to ruin moments. Um, it's it's important. Seriously, it's a big deal. That's why yeah. I, I love well, you. Well, this is good. Just I, keep kicking ass. This yeah, is good. And I love yeah. you all so much. Seriously. Love you too. Now, off the mic, you know that. So, everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Dead Talks and uh, a Ferrugio session of family therapy. Ferrugio. Ferrugio. Oh, you're not Ferrugios anymore. Bro, anyway, guys, bro, we'll see you later. Bro. Tune in. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Dead Talks. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. That'll give you updates as to when we post a new video, more episodes, and more content in general. We are streaming in all the major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and all that. And also find us on Instagram at Dead Talks Podcast or www.deadtalks.net. Thank you so much.